Good morning. I'm Lauren Rush. Welcome to this news briefing from the 254th National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in Washington, D.C. We're joined today by Dr. Diedrich Balkanenda from the University of California, Berkeley. He will be discussing his work on developing a muscle-inspired glue that could one day make fetal surgery safer. Dr. Balkanenda. Thank you very much for your, for your kind introduction. Could you switch to the next slide? Yeah, thank you. So advanced diagnostics uh, were previously used for, to, for prenatal um, uh, decision-making around pregnancy termination and, and around postnatal care, which were two very controversial and difficult decisions. So in 1981, Professor Dr. Um, Michael Harrison of the UCSF, who is a pediatric surgeon, devised a third option, which is um, uh, fetal surgery. So fetal surgery you have is, a lap uh, is nowadays a laparoscopic um, surger surgical uh, procedure where you insert a probe into the, into the womb and you have to puncture the, fe the fragile amniotic sac. This is a very dangerous, dangerous operation since the amniotic sac, after you do this operation, you, you retract the, the, uh, the surgical tools and you leave a little hole. And that hole can propagate in some cases and fracture the entire amniotic sac, which leads to premature birth. Um, could you, uh, no, uh, previous slide, sorry. Yes, so these, these operations are usually performed between 16 and 26 weeks and premature birth usually gives like a fatal outcome because the babies do not survive, in fact. Um, so, so some of these, like to, to just highlight one of these interventions, like twin-twin transfusion, where, two where a twin is, is growing out of the same placenta, so for one egg twins, um, there are sometimes veins that are connecting the two umbilical cords, and then there can be an imbalance in the blood flow between the two babies, resulting in resulting in an imbalance of the blood from the mother going to one of the babies. And this, this can be fatal for one of them. And it's a very easy procedure where with a laser you can seal some of these veins and then resolve this issue. So that's like one example of a fetal, fetal surgical procedure. So the, so the challenge is that we need to keep after this surgery the babies longer inside of the womb. And there, at the moment, there are not really many sealants that, that can do that. In fact, there are no, no FDA-approved sealants at this point. So, uh, next slide. So, um, so one, one previously muscle-inspired sealant from, from my group um, at UC Berkeley, from the Messersmith lab, had proven to be quite, quite a successful approach uh, to seal the, seal the amniotic sac. And, and we, were, we built upon this work. Um, and we, we created a one-step tissue adhesion, uh, adhesive patch and a liquid formulation that, that you can just inject and it immediately forms an adhesive, uh, adhesive patch. Uh, in fact, it, it does take a little bit of time, but it forms a very strong bond within an hour. Um, so this, this adhesion I explained yesterday um, in, in much more detail that we have like a muscle-inspired adhesive that that attaches to the tissue surface. Um, and that's inspired on the adhesive strength of the muscles because muscles can adhere very strong to, to rocks and to, to, um, to wood and they can withstand the tidal forces. So this is a very strong adhesion and we, we inspire ourselves on that adhesion. And then we have a DNA inspired mechanism that keeps the material strong that while it swells a bit, it stays always strong together for we, we don't really know yet how long, but for sure for weeks. Um, and then we use a trick, we use like both hydrophilic and hydrophobic uh, monomers in our polymeric system to create a material that only swells up to a certain extent. Um, and this gives, so these, these materials, we can easily press like clear films. We can also dissolve these films, but we can uh, press clear films out of the various shapes. In this case, we made a cal shape. And these, and these adhere very strong to tissue. As you see in the picture, this, this film adhered to, to a tissue and could hold up a large bag of muscles. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, please state your name and affiliation before asking a question.
Uh, Doug Dollamore, American Chemical Society. I have a couple questions. Um, first of all, you say this is muscle inspired, and I'm wondering if there's a story behind that. Where did the inspiration come to? Somebody walk down to the, the dock and say, hey, these muscles look cool. I'm wondering what we could do with them. So um, this, this has a long, long history. So the, um, so, uh, the, the adhesion of muscles to various, like, various rocks and, and other materials um, has been studied by the by the Wadey Group at U, at the UC um, uh, Santa Barbara campus. Um, he has he has studied in detail the different mechanisms behind the muscle adhesion, and it's it's in fact a very complex complex mechanism where there are very many um, uh, different proteins of different uh, uh, with different uh, protein residues. Um, uh, and and of those of those um, uh, uh, residues, we only use a mimic of dopa. So there's dopa is is partially responsible for the adhesion, but for example, lysine also plays a very important role. And we do not use the lysine in this case. So lysine is 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 known to both enhance the crosslinking to or adhesion to rocks at the adhesive interface. But it also helps to to um, mop up some of the of the salts that you find uh, at the interface, especially at the wet interface. Could this glue have a um, uh, other medical uses other than for uh, fetal surgery? So certainly, certainly, it could have other medical uses. Um, there, there are still some issues. So, for example, the current glue is not biodegradable. So we would have to design a biodegradable backbone. So at the moment, we have a static, static backbone. For some applications, this, this could be useful. But for other applications, it is necessary to design a biodegradable backbone. Hi, Christine, uh, American yes. Chemical Society. Um, can you talk a little bit about the pre-sealant approach for using this glue? And um, also, is that pre-sealant approach, is that used for other, is that concept around already in other types of surgery, or is this unique to fetal surgery? Um, I, f I think this is, this is a, a rather novel design that is devised by Michael Harrison, the, the professor I mentioned before. And the idea is that the, the fetal membrane is a very fragile membrane. So if you puncture it, you could already start this, this fracturing. And so if you could, could put a patch or a glue that reinforces the strength of the membrane, you could potentially puncture it, do the, do the operation, and don't seal it afterwards. So, with, so for example, if you do amniocentesis, you only puncture it once, and that's a very thin, thin gauge uh, operation where you just check the genetics. There, it's, it's not a problem that there's a little hole left. With fetal surgery, you're really like moving around uh, and do, during the operation, which also takes much longer. So if you could reinforce the membrane, you may, you may be able to get away with, with, um, with just pre-sealing and then leaving the little hole that, you, that you're left with. And with the, when you're um, accessing the fetus through the the amniotic sac, are you also, would it be going through the glue? Is that yeah. the idea? Or would the glue be surrounding an area where you can penetrate the amniotic sac? So, so the pre-sealing works, works by um, that, the, that it's possible if you, if, you enter, if you enter through the uterus and you, you hit the, the amniotic sac, it is possible to tent the amniotic sac before you actually puncture it. So it's possible to create a little cavity and this is actually where Michael Harrison had the idea that you can actually uh, do pre-sealing. So you can pre-seal this membrane before you puncture it. And then you can pre-seal a certain area. Um, this does require experience from, from the surgeons that perform this operation. Though the surgeons that we talk with at the UCSF, they say that they really can easily feel that you tent the membrane before you actually puncture it. Thank you. Hi, Ben Valsler from Chemistry World magazine. Um, I, I'm guessing the pre-sealing essentially works like putting a piece of sellotape on a balloon. You can then pop your, well, you can then stab your balloon with a pin and it won't pop because yes. the sellotape 
protects the, the layer. Uh, okay, that's helped me to understand that one. Uh, so muscle proteins are extremely good adhesive, and that's clearly what you're inspired by. Um, but proteins are notoriously allergenic. And uh, this is clearly a, a situation where you don't want an immune response. So yes. how are you going to get around these sorts of things? And how are you going to develop this into a biocompatible treatment? So at this, at this point, um, we are very far away from proteins. So we use a protein mimetic molecule, um, which, is, which is a catechol that's reacted to metacrylate monomer. So we, we copolymerize this monomer into a polymer backbone that also contains PEC, which is a known um, anti-fouling anti -fouling polymer. This, this may not mean that this, that this polymer is completely safe. We have to do like in vivo and ex vivo tests to, to, um, to study whether this is biocompatible or not. But our assumptions at this point are that the, this material is in fact biocompatible. And could you tell me a bit more about the tests you've done using the bovine heart tissue? I'm, I'm not, I, I can picture gluing together parts of bovine heart, but I, I'm not quite sure how I can see that linking to something under pressure like the amniotic sac. Yeah, so we in fact did not, did not use bovine heart, but we used bovine pericardium, which is a membrane that is high in collagen that surrounds the cow's heart. This, this membrane somewhat um, uh, mimics the membrane that you find, like the amniotic sac that you, that you have, which is also very high in collagen. Uh, which is very different from using pig skin, for example. Um, it, is, it is notoriously difficult to get your hands onto amniotic sac uh, 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 material, which is, which is logical and which I think is, is good that it's difficult to get your hands on, that you cannot just do all tests on, on amniotic uh, membrane. So we, we performed all our tests on bovine pericardium and we have so only for the best glues, which we have to resynthesize in a controlled manner, we will, we will actually test that on, on fetal membrane. And we do have access to that via the UCSF. Thank you very much. All right, if there are no more questions, um, thank you. The archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS live underscore DC. Please join us for our next press conference today at 11 a.m. on the potential risks of taking licorice for hot flashes. Thank you. Thank you.